Hello everyone, welcome to this week's video from Culture Katha. Friends, it's that time of the year when in several parts of India, the living remember their dead ancestors and offer homage to them. Yes, it's the Mahalaya or the Pitrupaksha. Pitrupaksha lasts for 16 days of the dark moon phase starting from the full moon day in the Hindu month of Bhadrapada that falls in the fortnight after the Ganesh Utsav. And Pitrupaksha ends with the no moon day or Amavasya specifically called the Sarvapitri Amavasya. So who are the Pitrus and why should we be offering our homage to them? The word Pitru means father and has over time come to refer to our forefathers or ancestors. The Pitrus were considered important because man realized that he owed his existence to them and I mean not just biologically. One of the things that makes us humans special in the living world is that we pass on not just our genetic material but also our accumulated knowledge and collective wisdom to our descendants. To me, that above all else makes our ancestors worthy of our gratitude. So ancestor worship is among the oldest forms of worship known to man. Every culture has its own style and form of thanksgiving to its ancestors. Hindus believe that even when a person is born, he comes into this world indebted to three people, the gods, the sages and his ancestors. This is called three runa, runa meaning debt. A Hindu male can repay the debt to his ancestors only if he produces progeny and performs all the rituals relating to his dead forefathers such as the Tarpanas and the Shraddhas. One common belief among ancient cultures is that the dead man always joined the gods in heavens and became one of them. In Hindu belief too, Yama, whom today we know as the Lord of Death, was considered the first man to die and reach the other world first. But how do we thank our dead ancestors who are no longer here? Across several Indo-European cultures, there is a general belief that the departed ancestors come to the earth in the form of birds. The ancient man, seeing the birds flying high in the sky, close to the heavens where he believed his ancestors lived, may have imagined them visiting him in the form of birds. In the Hindu tradition, we believe that our ancestors visit us in the form of crows and we thank our ancestors by feeding the birds or the crows by offering them pindadan, the ritual offering of a rice ball with sesame seeds. But why would a dead man need food? Ancient Vedic man believed that once a man dies, he leaves behind his mortal body and returns to the land of his ancestors called the Pitruloka. He resides in the Pitruloka for some time before he returns to the earth taking on a new body. And this new body is made possible only by the sacrificial offerings made to him on earth. It is by consuming these offerings that the dead man acquires a whole new body and returns to earth. Over time, uh, the custom of offering rice balls called Pindadan replaced the offerings made into the sacrificial fire during the Vedic times. What's more interesting is that these dead ancestors were believed to return to the same families from which they departed. So great grandfathers were born again as the great grandsons in the same family. This belief probably explains the practice of naming newborn children after their grandparents. But why is Pitrupaksha observed at this particular time of the year? Astronomically speaking, the month of Bhadrapada, which typically falls in September, sees the autumnal equinox. After the autumnal equinox, the sun is seen to move from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere. This time of the year marks the beginning of shorter days and longer and colder nights in the northern hemisphere. 
Moreover, Pitrupaksha is observed in the darker fortnight of the month, the waxing phase of the moon or the Krishna Paksha. It is possible that this particular astronomical period marked by darkness was deliberately chosen to pay homage to the dead. The association of darkness and the color black with death can also be seen in the extensive views of till or black sesame seeds in these rituals and the significance attached to the black colored birds, crows. Okay, so we have so many dead ancestors in our family, most of whom we do not even know of. So during the Pitrupaksha, do we offer homage to them all or only to a few? Six generations of Pitrus are believed to reside in the Pitruloka. The immediate three generations, including a man's father, grandfather and great-grandfather, are called the Ashramukha Pitrus for whom annual Tarpanas and Shraddhas are offered. The previous three generations are called the Nandimukha Pitrus who are remembered on special occasions such as Upanayanams and marriage ceremonies. Apart from these two, there is a third category of Pitrus called Karunika Pitrus who includes all other dead ancestors apart from the six I mentioned. And they can include a person's stepmother, one's uncles, a sister-in-law, a daughter-in-law or even a guru. And these Karunika Pitrus for whom annual Shraddhas and Tarpanas are not performed are remembered only during the Pitrupaksha. Sarva Pitri Amavasya marks the culminating day of the Pitrupaksha. It is the day on which Pindadan is offered to all dead ancestors, especially those for whom annual offerings have not been made through Shraddha ceremonies and Tarpanas. Friends, these ideas around death and rebirth have evolved over time through the early Vedic, Upanishadic and the epic Puranic periods. For a detailed understanding of Hindu beliefs around death and what happens after, do check out my blog on www.culturekatha.com, the link for which I have attached in the description box given below. But if I were to summarize it, I would say these practices seem to have evolved owing to time and the need of the hour. Scholars say that in the Rig Veda, the oldest of Hindu texts, death is regarded with sadness but without terror. And heaven or the land of the dead is regarded as a gentle place where a man could reside happily depending upon the fruits of the yajnas he had performed or his good deeds. So Rig Veda seems to be more accepting of death and does not express fear of the afterlife. But while accepting the inevitability of death, Rig Veda does express the desire for rebirth of the dead and their return to earth. These ideas of death and rebirth continue to evolve and by the time of the Upanishads, a dead man's karma was believed to decide his future path. So a man who had exhausted all his karma, both good and bad, would take the path of the gods, the Devayana, and would permanently reside there with them, having broken the vicious cycle of samsara. On the other hand, other lesser men would take the path of the Pitrus, the Pitruyana and would reside with the Pitrus for a while before returning to earth again to continue their karmic journey. But it is during the Puranic periods, death came to attain more terrifying dimensions. Several belief systems evolved with Puranic texts like the Garuda Purana describing the torturous journey of the soul to the Yamaloka in gory detail. The concept of Naraka that is absent in the Vedas emerged during the Puranic times. As a fallout of these new ideas, the rituals meant to reduce the suffering of the soul began to multiply. Dana or gift offerings made to Brahmins thus became an important part of these solemn rituals. So the rituals that we perform for the dead today while having their roots in the Vedic tradition belong mostly to the Puranic period. Friends, while we remember the dead and cherish their memories, let's not forget to celebrate the living, the care for them and appreciate them while they are still with us. That's very important too. 
So friends, hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please do like and share and also do remember to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. And subscribers, please remember to press the bell icon to receive notifications on new video uploads. I think having delved into death and mortality in this video, I think I should take up the idea of immortality in my next. So look forward to meeting you all soon. Till then, it's Tata. Bye-bye. Take care.